Hello everyone, nice to be back. This is Pharaoh from Normalish Software here for the part four, I believe, of the Unreal Engine C++ training series. Today, we'll be talking about blueprint implementable events. Now that's a mouthful, but all that means is this is a way for us to expand on the U functions that we built in the last tutorial, which is on the screen right now, hopefully. And what this will do is it'll allow our designers or for, or for other programmers who aren't as experienced in C++, but we'd like to get them uh, involved in, in writing some code. Um, it'll allow our, our other uh, teammates and hopefully ourselves as well to write functions in blueprints that we can then use in C++. Now you're going to be like, oh, how does that even work? Well, we're going to find out. So here I've opened up the character C++ file as well as the character header file like we have in all the other tutorials so far. So we should be very familiar with these. Um, just like last time, I'm going to go ahead and um, get rid of the fire sound because I'm wearing headphones and it's really loud. Uh, but actually what I'm going to do is I'm going to get rid of all of the rest of this fire function. So let's get rid of all of it. Boom, because we're not going to use it. We're going to rewrite this function inside of blueprints, but it will be accessible inside of our C++ files, or our C++ code. Now what we have here is if you look inside of the setup input player component, what this does is it sets up all of our gameplay key bindings. So we have fire set up to uh, our on fire function, which we won't be we won't need to be changing because we'll be using the on fire function, which is somewhere around here. It's right here, but we don't have any implementation for it in our C++ code because our implementation will be in our blueprint. So. Just like last time, we're going to make this a U function. And this time, what we're going to do is for our specifier, we're going to call this blueprint implementable event, which is once again, a mouthful, but it's very handy. And the category, I'm just going to give this just like last time cpp functions. So now that our now that we've got this as blueprint implementable, what we're going to do is we're going to save everything that we have right here and we're going to compile. Now hopefully uh, you've messed around with blueprints, but if not, this will be a nice simple easy way um, to go ahead and get ourselves familiar with at least the concepts of how blueprints work. We touched on them a little bit uh, last tutorial, but uh, this time we're going to actually be writing a function. So that's really cool. So just like last time, first person CPP, blueprints, first person character. So now we're going to go ahead and uh, open this. And as of right now, we're going to minimize this and we're going to hit play. And when we fire, nothing should happen because we got rid of that function, right? Cool. And when we exit the editor, we get no errors or no warnings. So that's cool. Uh, we'll come back to the, uh, to the first person character blueprint and let's go to the event graph. And here we've got all of everything, just like last time when you right click to create a new node. Maybe we do on fire, right? Event on fire, but is that's not exactly what we want. Because if we do this, nothing is going to happen unless we tell it to. And it won't link up with our C++ uh, functions here. So what we have is we're going to come over to the functions and we're going to override this function. And if you look all up and down here, we've got tons and tons of functions that we can override, but way, way up at the top, we're going to go to on fire. And actually that is that same event on fire node that, <laughs> okay. 
So the event on fire node that we have here is the same as if you were to just go ahead and search for it, event on fire. My mistake, but nonetheless, we learn something new every day. So now we're going to forget about the motion controls because the original on fire function had different motion controls. Uh, and you, you can see there's touch stuff going on right here. Um, but we're going to ignore that because we don't care about touch controls or motion controls for now. What we need to do is we need to spawn the actor, which is going to be our first person projectile. We're going to have to spawn that. What we're going to do is we're going to need to play the sound at our muzzle location. And we're going to get uh, uh, have to play the animation. And it's pretty simple. And all of this is going to work, remember, because we have the key binding set up here in our C++ code. All right, so let's just get into the blueprints. So event on fire. So this is the execution node. When I dra click and drag out from here, it'll ask me to place a new node. And for this, we're going to spawn an actor. So spawn actor from class. It has, you see it has a little star right here. It's uh, one of my favorites. It should be a favorite for just about everybody. Um, but nonetheless, we're going to go ahead and spawn actor from class. The class we're going to pick from is going to be our projectile. Remember, so let's go projectile, first person projectile. And here we've got the spawn transform. So this transform is going to have all of the data um, that, that we need for spawning the actor. So the actor's location, the actor's rotation, and the actor's scale. What we're going to do is we're going to right click on the, on the pin right here, and we're going to split the struct pin. Because what the transform is, is it's the struct of all of those uh, values that I gave earlier. So the vector rotation, uh, location, the rotator rotation, and the vector uh, scale. We're going to leave the scale alone because the scale of one is good enough. So we're going to drag out from this pin right here, place a new node, and we're going to get the muzzle location of our actor. So actually what we're going to do is we're going to get a reference to it for, by going up here into the top left. See, we've got FP muzzle location. We're going to click and drag this out. And what we're going to do is we're going to drag out from here and we're going to get the actor's location. Oh, no, no, we're going to get the location because it's not an actor, it's a component. So get, so get world location and return value. We're going to put that into that pin right there. We're also going to get a reference to our character, but we don't really need that because we've we are in the character. So what we're going to do is we're going to get the actor's control rotation. So get control rotation. And the difference between getting the actor's rotation and the control rotation is that the control rotation also has in all three of the rotation axes. So if we just use the actor rotation, we would only be getting, what are they, the pitch and the roll. We would not, or I'm sorry, we would be getting the yaw and the roll. We would not be getting any pitch. So we use the control rotation, which if you hover over, you can see it's often the view rotation of the pawn. So we have the spawn location rotation, and the scale is going to be fine. Uh, the collision handling override, right now it's at default, but if you look inside of the C++ code for the uh, original function, it is at try to adjust location, but don't spawn if still colliding. These are really long enum names, I know. So here, we've got the spawn, so if we click compile and save, and we save our map. We can come in and you can see that it's spawning. 
but there's no sound being played and there's no animation. It's pretty dull. So we're going to go ahead and fix that. We're going to play, drag another node out from the execution pin of the spawn actor. And we're going to play sound at location. And here we don't necessarily need to use the muzzle location. We could use the actor's location. Um, but since we already have this pin, we can go ahead and drag this one out over here. We're going to already just use the muzzle location of the, of the, the uh, for the sound uh, just because it, it works and technically the sound does come out of the muzzle. So let's go ahead and do that. And for the sound, we're going to click on this arrow, get the asset. And the only asset that we have here is the weapon fire sound. So that's really cool. We can just go ahead and put that in and compile, save. And now there should be a, a loud and obnoxious sound coming out of the gun. All right, now that works. We're almost there, we're two thirds of the way done. So now we need to do the animation. But to do that, we're going to, we're gonna need to get an animation in, instance. But from there, we need to get the mesh 1P. This will be the skeletal mesh component. If you can see in the details panel, that's where our arms are. Our arms are actually doing the animation, not the gun. So we'll get a click and drag out a reference to mesh 1P and get anim instance. And this is just gonna be an instance of an animation, right? And then from here, we go to montage play. There's a function right here, montage play. And there's once again, a lot of parameters that we can input to this function. Fortunately, we, we've already got the target, so that's really cool. So the execution pin, plug that in right there, simple, simple. And we're actually gonna not worry about these three right here, these three parameters. We're not gonna worry about that. Uh, we are going to worry about the montage to play. So this is going to be the animation montage that's going to play when we fire this gun. Once again, fortunately for us, there's only one of them and it's our first person fire montage. Simple and easy. Once again, we're gonna compile, save and play. And now our character is animating just as if we made our function in C++. The good thing, the upside to doing this um, in this way is you can have the function as blueprint implementable inside of C++. You can have somebody else write the code or you can you know, write the code yourself in blueprints and then you can still call it from C++. So for example, if we come back into our begin play, which I'm pretty sure you're tired of if you've been following these tutorials, and on fire, make sure you call that function in there. Let's go ahead and compile it. And the function that we wrote in blueprints should fire off inside of our C++ class from the begin play function. So, all right, compile complete. If I hit play, the gun should fire. Boom, there we go. So once again, we write our function as a U function and make it a blueprint implementable event, giving it a category. You do not implement or even do anything with this function at all in C++ you can then pass it off to somebody else and they can write all of the code that they would like inside of Blueprints, compile it, save it, and you can call it from C++. Simple and easy. Hopefully that was uh, informational. Hopefully it was easy to follow. 
If not, let me know in the comment section down below if you've got any other tips or tricks for me uh, or for the fellow Unreal developers here. Um, also, you can drop those in the comment section down below. Uh, toss a like if you liked it. Toss a dislike if you disliked it. Um, and if you've got other suggestions for me, just let me know. Uh, but thank you for your time. Bye-bye.